Let's talk heart health. Did you know that the heart is the sovereign ruler of the body? That it is command central. It communicates with every single system and regulates the rhythm and the flow of our entire body. Ancient Chinese or Ayurvedic medicine considered it to be the organ associated with love, joy, peace, wellness, vitality, really just an overall enthusiasm for life. All of that was in our hearts. And when we think about what God speaks to, he speaks to our hearts. And in verses like Proverbs 17, 22, when he says, a joyful heart is good medicine, but a crushed spirit dries up the bones. He knew that when we have a joyful heart, we are allowing the hormone oxytocin to be coursing through our bodies. And the hormone oxytocin is really our well and vitality hormone. And our emotions are truly just a cascade of chemicals that flood our bodies. They are not in any way separate from us physically. And so when we have the emotions joy, love, and just feeling good, then we have the hormone oxytocin working in our bodies. And this is such an incredible hormone because it's, it's anti-aging. It literally regenerates us at the cellular level and creates overall restoration and rejuvenation inside of us. It is also the love and the bonding and the connecting hormone. When a woman is having a baby, oxytocin is there. When she needs to feed the baby and release the milk, oxytocin is there. Right after physical intimacy with your spouse, men have the highest spike in oxytocin that they can have, and women have a large surge of oxytocin as well. So oxytocin bonds, connects, and builds love between us, and it also is working at that cellular level to completely rejuvenate and restore our bodies. It's associated with a healthy body weight. It um, works to regulate our appetites, which means when we're actually feeling full, we're feeling satisfied and content when oxytocin is present. And another great way to boost oxytocin is exercise. Exercise totally boosts oxytocin. And so God knows when he's telling us to be joyful because there are so many verses in the Bible that include joy that are related to hardship. Um, consider it joy, my friends, when you go through a trial. Rejoice in the Lord always. That's because God knows when we are ch intentionally choosing joy and being joyful in spite of our circumstances, we are literally at our strongest physically and emotionally to handle whatever he allows in our lives. But when those other hormones like fear, anger, frustration, sadness, when they are what is ruling our lives, that means cortisol is running the show. And when cortisol is up, oxytocin is depressed, suppressed. They do not work together. And cortisol was really designed to rise quickly and then fall away quickly. It is truly the fight or flight hormone. It takes our energy and puts it into our muscles and the part of our brain that's for really quick thinking. Cortisol is there to sustain us in a really stressful or traumatic situation. So once we are past that situation, we really need to rest and relax and restore. Because if cortisol is allowed to stay present, when we allow those other hormones to dominate in our life, we are not digesting well because our body's energy is pulled away from digestion. So we're not uptaking nutrients and we're not um, being healthy in that way nutritionally. And we can't have that deep thinking where we can really be wise in our thoughts. So additionally, when cortisol is allowed to stick around, it creates low levels of inflammation. And it also constantly has our blood sugar raised, which affects our weight. And we can't be at a healthy weight when we are constantly stressed. So all of these really lead us, leave us susceptible to disease. And so when God is telling us, do not worry, do not be feared, do not be anxious in anything, he knows that when we allow those emotions to dominate, we are actually 
putting ourselves at risk physically. We are not going to be physically or emotionally able to handle whatever he is allowing in our life. So my hope is for you as that this knowledge of how your emotions affect you physically, particularly the emotion joy, that you will be intentional in choosing joy. And I think that one of the reasons why I'm supposed to share this with you is because for about the past year of my life, I have been allowing myself to be completely overwhelmed and stressed out. And you know, I had a two year old, I have teenagers and that combination alone creates stress. And I wasn't telling anyone that I needed help. I just kept pouring into seven people, didn't have time for self care, didn't tell anyone that I need someone to pour back into me. I just kept telling myself, I've got this. It'll be fine. I've got this. I, I'll be fine. But really what happened is I was completely and emotionally depleted and that absolutely put a strain on my marriage. And so I actually have it on my prayer list to, um, for God to help me to have more intentional joy and in all things, God is good. It's been on my prayer list for a month. These things take time, months, these things take time, but he is always faithful and I've had to be very intentional. I've had to make different choices. I've had to reach out for more help, but I can honestly say that I now have much more joy in my life and I definitely feel healthier and I know I'm healthier. And so I hope that you reach out and however you need to reach out and you find ways to intentionally bring joy and choose joy in your life. And of course, I am always here if you need someone to help you um, work through managing stress and I'll be teaching yoga in the fall. I'll be certified. So you're always welcome to join me for yoga for movement and stress management. Those are excellent ways to raise oxytocin. But mostly, I just wanted you guys to know that when we choose joy, it really does put us in a place where we are so much stronger both physically and emotionally, and that God is so good when he says, be joyful in everything.